present in the counter for here. Good morning, and thanks uh, to all of you for being here today. I am proud to be here today with so many of my Democratic colleagues, stakeholders, and peoples whose lives will be affected by the proposals we're announcing today. As a cancer survivor, I know the side effects of a major illness can make everybody, everyday tasks a struggle. For many Wisconsinites, things like medical marijuana or other products like CBD oil can help alleviate chronic pain from debilitating medical conditions, reduce symptoms for things like anxiety, and help even help folks cope with things like P uh, PTSD. I believe, and I know the people of Wisconsin overwhelmingly believe, that people shouldn't be treated like criminals for accessing medicine that can change or maybe even save their lives. That's among the many reasons why I'm announcing today that it's time for Wisconsin to join the more than 30 other states and the District of Columbia in legalizing medical marijuana and ensuring access to CBD oil in Wisconsin. I know many of you here today have been working on and talking about these issues for many years, and I want to thank you for your leadership and your advocacy. But I also want to make this clear. This is not just about access to health care. This is about connecting the dots between racial disparities and economic inequity. Wisconsin has the highest incarceration rate in the country for black men, and drug-related offenses account for a significant proportion of those inmate populations. The bottom line is that we're spending too much money prosecuting and incarcerating people, and often people of color, for nonviolent crimes related to possessing small amounts of marijuana. This doesn't make us, our state, any stronger or safer. And in the end, it hurts our kids and our families and our communities in the long run. So I'm announcing today that in our budget, we will decriminalize possession of marijuana in amounts of 25 grams or less. And we'll also be creating a path for an expungement for these crimes for those who've completed their sentence or probation. This is only one part, obviously, of, of addressing racial inequities, economic inequity, and cycles of poverty in communities across our state. But it's a critical piece, a piece that's, one, that's been supported by Republicans and Democrats alike in other states. At the end of the day, this is not a Republican or Democratic issue. Wisconsinites overwhelmingly agree that access to medical marijuana CBD oil and decriminalization for small amounts of marijuana are critically important issues, and I believe we can get this done in the budget. Thank you so much, and now I'd like to introduce uh, Senator, or excuse me, Representative Chris Taylor. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Governor Evers, and for you all, my colleagues, for being here on this really important day. We've waited a long time for this. We all know someone, we all have a loved one who has suffered from some horrible, debilitating disease, and we all would want to do everything in our power to ease that suffering of that individual. We know that for some people, medical marijuana can bring needed relief from chronic, debilitating pain. I've heard countless stories, and I know Senator Erpenbach has heard countless stories that we worked on this issue of medical marijuana now upwards of a decade. We've heard from people all over Wisconsin, from red counties, blue counties, purple counties. We've heard from parents, grandparents, brothers, and sisters, veterans, cancer patients, those suffering from addiction, who are desperate to legally access medical marijuana. And that is why we are here today. And that is why um, I am so enthusiastic about this proposal in the governor's budget. Unfortunately, right now under Wisconsin law, these individuals who try to get this can be, you know, very, very important medication for their loved ones are criminals. They are criminals right now under Wisconsin law. That's not right. It's time to change this. 
With about 34 states and the District of Columbia allowing medical marijuana, including all of our surrounding states, it's time for Wisconsin to join red states, blue states, purple states, including Arkansas, Arizona, Montana, Florida, Ohio, Nevada, North Dakota. I can go on and on about finally allowing Wisconsinites who are suffering from a debilitating condition to access medical marijuana. It's time for Wisconsin to open our minds, our hearts, and our laws to seriously ill Wisconsinites. We know that Wisconsinites overwhelmingly support medical marijuana. We just had, in the fall 2018 election, there were 18 referenda ballot measures around the state, 16 counties and the cities of Racine and Waukesha regarding marijuana. Every single one passed by very healthy majorities. It didn't matter if it was a Democrat or Republican county. They all passed. Research is also showing that legalizing access to medical marijuana is one tool to help combat the opioid crisis. We have spent a lot of time here in the legislature addressing the opioid issue. We now have credible evidence that states that allow access to medical marijuana see improvements on overdose rates. We have a 2016 University of Michigan study that found patients using medical marijuana to treat chronic pain reported a 64% reduction in their use of opioid painkillers. We have study after study that shows legalized medical marijuana cut opioid overdose deaths. Isn't that a good thing? Isn't that something we all should strive for? So I'm very, very proud today to stand with Governor Evers and my colleagues and advocates, all of you out there who have worked so tirelessly to make sure that patients have access to the medication that they need the most to alleviate their suffering. Nobody should be treated like a criminal for accessing the medication they or their loved one needs. So with that, I'm so pleased to introduce Representative David Crawley, my esteemed colleague and chair of the Legislative Black Caucus. Thank you again for being here. I am here today because I believe that this plan will not only benefit all Wisconsinites, but it will especially benefit Wisconsinites of color. For too long, Wisconsin's criminal justice system has been anything but just. By any standard, Wisconsin continues to be the worst place in America to be a black person, and our current criminal justice system is one of the biggest reasons why. African Americans make up about 6% of the population in our state. However, we make up almost 40%, 40% of our prison population. That is unjust. Many, if not most, of these crimes these young black men are getting locked up for are for low-level drug offenses. In fact, in my county alone, 40% of the black men arrested were for low-level drug offenses. And right here in Dane County, black men have been locked up for drug offenses nearly 100 times more than their white counterparts. Even more troubling is studies that show that the disparity is only getting larger, not smaller. That is unjust. There is clear evidence that says that harsh drug laws do not do much to deter marijuana use. All they succeed in doing is disproportionately locking up Wisconsinites of color. That is why I'm happy to stand with Governor Evers today and my colleagues and advocates to take part in announcing this first step towards decriminalization of marijuana. There are folks out there that may say that this proposal is not perfect, and it isn't. There are some that will say that we can do better, and we will. But this is a first step in the right direction toward eliminating the disproportionate burden that is imposed on communities of color. I've seen firsthand the devastating effects of our unjust and racially disproportionate criminal justice system. That is why I'm proud again to stand here and to support this plan. And I hope I am hopeful that we will be able to accomplish even more to this end in the future, and that together we can make Wisconsin a better place for all. With that, I would like to introduce Steve Achelon, who is the founder of Wisconsin Veterans for Compassionate Care. It's actually Steve Atchison, but that's all right. I don't. It's not about me. It's about everybody here. Uh, I'm a veteran. 
Uh, I served in Iraq in 2005. I participated in over 400 combat missions as escort, uh, lead driver of an escort team, and I was injured while I was deployed. Uh, I've had three surgeries on my spine since then, and I suffer from a condition called cauda equina, which provides a lot of pain and, and numbness and other things going on. Uh, I also have post-traumatic stress, um, and that's been an interesting battle uh, coming home and, and having to deal with that. And really the only option that was provided to me was pills. And in 2008, when I first got out of the military, I was on about seven or eight different pills every day from the VA, uh, from opiates to muscle relaxers to sleep medication, benzos, I mean, you name it. And I was a zombie. And I was trying to go to school for an engineering degree, and I was about to drop out because I just couldn't function anymore. And that's when someone behind me in class offered to, to uh, smoke some cannabis with me and it was like a light switch went off. And over the next couple months, I was able to replace every single medication that the VA had me on and have done that successfully since 2009, uh, other than the occasional ibuprofen or something. It's been nothing but cannabis. Uh, and that has put me in a very difficult position uh, because I'm also a father, a stepfather. I'm about to be a brand new father in June. Uh, I'm active in my community, uh, and, and I do a lot, of, a lot of work for veterans as well, and it's put me in this really gray area where every day I step out of my door, I have to worry about being convicted of a crime, and I think that's a shame. Uh, there's way too many of our fellow veterans dying from overprescription and suicide. We need an alternative, and we need an off-ramp. Often this cannabis is referred to as a gateway drug, and that could not be further from the truth. If you believe in science and statistics, that could not be further from the truth, and we need to get rid of that stigma and that narrative. What we need is an off-ramp, and cannabis can provide that. In 2016, I stood at a podium much like this one with, with Rep. Taylor and Senator Erpenbach. In 2016, asking legislators then to legalize this medicine, and I'm still here in 2019, now with Governor Evers, uh, asking that same question. So to that end, we started Wisconsin Veterans for Compassionate Care. We're a nonpartisan veteran advocacy organization specifically focused on cannabis, founded on the principle of giving veterans a choice in their medication and a chance to be less dependent on dangerous and addictive pharmaceuticals. Also, that we can use this medication without risking the penalty by law. Since 2016, a lot of movement has happened in the veteran world that I don't think a lot of people are aware of. Um, the State Departments of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, American Legion, Military Order of the Purple Heart, and Disabled American Veterans have all passed resolutions supporting the implementation of a statewide medical cannabis program. Also nationally, those same organizations uh, support rescheduling cannabis and medicinal cannabis programs for veterans nationwide. The death rate from opioids for veterans using VA health care is nearly double the national average. According to the Department of Veteran Affairs, veterans are prescribed 50% more opiates than the general population and die from accidental opiate overdose at roughly 33% higher rates than civilian counterparts. In 2017 alone, over 136 Wisconsin veterans committed suicide. Nearly 30% of those involved legal prescription opioids. The National Academy of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine reported a comprehensive study that there is conclusive or substantial evidence that not just cannabinoids, but cannabis, the whole plant itself, is a medicine, is capable of treating chronic pain. Medical cannabis is currently legal in 33 states in the District of Columbia. In the 2018 state election, 50% of the state's population weighed in on medical cannabis, and overwhelmingly, over 75% on average of Wisconsin residents who voted support the legalization of medical cannabis. Even red states like Marquette and Sauk counties saw over 70% of people in favor of medical cannabis. This is not, I mean, you see mostly Democrats up here, am I right? Mostly Democrats. This is a nonpartisan issue. There should be equal number of Republicans up here supporting this, this measure in this bill, in this budget. It's time to legalize medical cannabis and provide safe access for veterans. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, Steve. Um, my name is John Erpenbach. I'm a state senator, um, but I want to talk about Steve just for a second. It's not the first time I've heard Steve's story, uh, but each time I do hear the story, it makes me hurt just a little bit more inside that we haven't done something about this al already. Uh, first of all, Steve, thank you for your service and thank you for your fight um, on, on this particular issue. Started working on this issue about 10 years ago. Um, this has been a long time coming. And Steve talked about the idea of Republican support, and there is some Republican support for legalizing marijuana for medical purposes. They just can't be out loud right now for some particular reason, and I, I've never understood that because, as Steve said, this isn't a partisan issue. This isn't a, a situation where cancer just strikes Democrats or PTSD just strikes Democrats. It's, it's a across the board. And everybody in this building, every single elected official in this building knows somebody who knows somebody, or maybe it's their own family member who's used marijuana for medical purposes. But at the same time, whether it was the son, the daughter, the mother, the grandmother, the father, the grandfather, a good friend having to go out and break the law, sometimes put themselves in really sticky situations in order to get marijuana for medical purposes. Those days have to end. And I am proud of the fact that we have a governor now who supports this idea in Governor Evers. So I'm glad it's in his budget. Uh, we have a long way to go. But at the same time, this issue, when we started 10 years ago, was on a way back burner. Now it's out in front because the governor says this is something we need to resolve. And so we are pleased to stand with him today and do what we can, whether it's through the budget process or separate legislation, to finally see this become law here in the state of Wisconsin. So with that, the governor would be happy to answer any questions that you have right now. Don't overpromise. Um, yeah. <laughs> says that marijuana will not really be called medical marijuana because there are no long-term clinical studies that lead to that pharmacological effect. Well, I know there are people that want to make this more complex than what it, what it should be. Um, there's plenty of studies that indicate that marijuana can be used in many, many circumstances that help people and we're relying on that science. Next question. Governor, can you uh, explain why you decided to seek to, to decriminalize the small amounts of marijuana rather than legalize it, which would lead to some revenue? Well, sir, the, the question was around the issue why we decided to uh, uh, decriminalize small amounts rather, rather than legalizing uh, recreational marijuana. I believe that's the question. And we, we're starting with places that we feel that we can have a, that we can win. We ha I believe that there are uh, Republicans out there that feel confident that this is uh, uh, something that's important, not only th around the issue of medical marijuana, but also decriminalizing small amounts. And it, it connects the dots with our, with our e efforts that we'll be, we're going to be having going forward around the issue of cr criminal justice reform. So we feel it's a good starting place. Is, is that a starting place and an ending place for the issue of criminal justice reform? No. Is this a starting and ending place for the discussion of legalizing mar uh, um, recreational marijuana? The answer is no. But it's a great starting place because it's going to help people that need uh, additional resources at their disposal to, to take care of pain and other issues that they might have. And it's a good place to start, <clears throat> excuse me, to make sure that we're having uh, fairness in our ju uh, criminal justice system. Governor, one concern that you always hear from, uh, from law enforcement groups whenever you talk about any kind of legalization proposal is minors have greater access to marijuana. What is in your proposal to keep that from happening? Uh, th this proposal does address. It, it talks about those that are are adults in the system and not uh, minors in the, in the system. Governor, shifting gears a little bit. Um, on Friday, the legislature sent you their version of the tax plan, giving you seven days to take action on it. Do you plan to veto it? I plan to review it and act on it within the time limit that I have. Try to find savings in transportation yet? 
Certainly, we're always as a, as a state. We're always looking for ways to become more efficient, and more effective, and transportation is one of those areas. But clearly, the task force has identified a lack of resources as a major issue, and we we plan to address that in our budget. About efficiencies. Okay, we. Um, uh, we're waiting for the task force to finish its work, and we'll include those things in the budget if, if they're budget worthy. All right, we got time for two more. How do you plan to get Republican leadership support on all these proposals? Well, we uh, we continue to meet and talk, and uh, I know, uh, for example, Representative Voss has indicated uh, in the past that he uh, was open to medical marijuana, and we hope to convince the Senate side of the same. I've heard that bill. Uh, the question is about the the uh, the issue of the Lincoln Hills and transferring some of those responsibilities to DCF. And uh, I, I don't have a position on that, but I I believe we we have to move forward and close the Lincoln Hills. That's our top <coughs> top priority, rather than worrying about where it's going to end up. Governor, thank you. Thank you much. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank have you. a good day. Thank you.